Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Richard Terrell. I go by Kirby Kid. This is Design Oriented. We do websites, blogs, Discord, streams, and videos. We have a YouTube channel. This is the Twitter. Uh, Discord links on the Twitter. That's the uh, quick and dirty for the intro. We are going to take a look at Flint Hook and examine a little bit of what makes its action gameplay uh, work. We're just a few episodes ago we talked about the action base so there's just a few things I want to highlight and point out uh, with Flint Hook as my example and we'll just play the game and talk a little bit, no nothing too serious. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and flick back over to the game. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I haven't really played this too much so this is just me playing it for about an hour or so prior to this. Let's see how the frame rate looks like. Why is it so choppy? Stop. How about this? And how about I change some of the settings here? Okay, it's a little smoother, so hopefully the stream is still running because I have to go to full screen mode to keep the uh, my sanity here. Oh, this room has blocks that go on a timer. I kind of like the visual feedback of a lot of elements in this, like those blocks have a little bell on it, so you know that when you hear a bell, it's somehow correlated with that. going up. I think we were going down actually. I missed it. So this game, your little character like this jumps around. You got a gun like this. You can shoot the gun. Oops. Let me get to a safe area. Yeah, that's safer than this. Okay, maybe this area. So you can... Oh! kill myself. Oh, I didn't, so I didn't even see that. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about this game. All the elements on the screen seem to have like the same art style and, and visual weight. So like some things look like they're in the background but they're in the foreground. Some things look like in the foreground and then you just pass right through them and I can't believe so many artists and so many indie game art just does that. Maybe it's just a lot of games in general, but I feel like with pixel art, people have gone a little too overboard on the like, let's make it look neat. In this game you can slow things down, kind of like the new Mega Man. I kind of want to compare this game to the new Mega Man, but uh, Mega Man 11, nobody's played. So all we have is a video to go off of. But in this game you have a hook. You see that little cursor? That's pretty much how far my bullets go. I have a special power-up that lets me charge and release one bullet like that. Um, when you're flying through the air, you know, you have freedom aiming like that, but it moves your character around. There's an alternate control scheme where it's just like two sticks or something. But I like this for now. Um, you go around collecting loot. Your item in the top left is limited. You only get like one bomb at a time until you find another one. But as you can see, you know, it's pretty easy to just mash that top right button, that shoulder button, and, and hook onto the nearest thing. But there are times when you want you think you very clearly line up a hook and it goes after something else because there's a little bit of uh, decision making involved. So in and your journey through this randomly generated level is to find this particular piece of treasure or get to the boss and um, try to get out with as much health as possible so you really don't have a lot of ways to regenerate your health so every hit you take kind of matters and you got these little cutscenes but you know, this game has a pretty simple action base that's kind of familiar to Mega Man and maybe Final Commando, but they add this um, roguelike element on top. Let me just make sure that the stream is recording still. Um, chat, tell me if the stream just, just doesn't have any video, because <laughs> that would be terrible. Is it still choppy? 
and I'm gonna go back to the game full screen. It's smooth for me right now, full screen. Every now and again, then you get locked into these monster closets. Enemies spawn in like that. Their bullets go through the floor. So you have like unlimited slowdown as long as you let it cool back down. I don't really like using it, so I don't, but it probably would help me in a lot of situations. Money's kind of useful, so you don't want to let it disappear. And you get like 10 health per chest like that, so... <laughs> you can see how... You want to not get hit a lot. I'm going to go ahead and buy this meat because I'm hurting for health. Now I have 75. Let's just say TikTok. Let's buy it. And like a lot of roguelikes, you go to occasional shops. Another monster closet room, I'm gonna charge my laser. I charged a super powerful hit, so it killed him in one hit. Oh! See, I couldn't see through this platform. That was probably my bad. And all the rooms are just kind of like randomly shuffled like this, so you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> you need to slow down. Oh, so this is interesting. There's these barriers like this that only go away when they uh, you slow down time. Crazy room. I really like the controls for the most part besides some of the but then the visual clutter kind of gets on my nerves but I think overall with this game my problem with it is like the rooms have decent ideas but nothing is ever like too solid or too fun and um, The middle section was a little tricky, but I didn't plan for it. Okay, so hazard on the left, right, up, and spinning. Kind of tight spaces for a lot of this. I like that there's single um, screen, not a lot of scrolling. I like that. Um, you know, I like the characters and the and the, the basic combination of. Whoop, what am I doing? Oh wow, those hooks are turning too. What the. I don't know what just happened, but it's fine. Probably not gonna make it out of this way. Oh no! There we go. So yeah, like the shooting gameplay. Never much more interesting than what you saw me doing before. Wow, they had the enemies already in the room and the opening hazard was going up. Uh, whoa, that shot didn't kill it? That looks like a power shot. Am I supposed to reflect these things back? No? Maybe kill all the other birds? No? Oh, they just take a ton of damage. Oh no! There we go. Space shell. So I found the space shell, and that means I can stop this level and go on to the next one. The whole purpose is to get to 
a set amount of levels and then you kind of beat beat it, right? And there's a boss at the end of the third level in this case. And it looks like I'm two levels in and I don't have a lot of health, so I either have to buy some or I got to uh, not get hit. But yeah, I've never been a fan of randomly generated levels. And this one really is just a shuffling of all these different um, rooms, like individual rooms that can connect to each other because it's tile based like that and block by block. Um, but I feel like a lot of people have just completely sort of tried to ignore level design and what that means for a game. Um, you know, not taking any lessons from Mario or any game. They're like, you know what, let's just build a big world and put occasional stuff in it. You're like, that's not level design. You don't have a lot of control over pacing when you do that. There's a potion. Purchase. Okay. Well. So yeah, even though you never know what you're going to get in this, and you know, a little bit of uh, uncertainty and surprise is always around every corner, like if the rooms aren't that interesting, or it just gets way repetitive too soon, so those bubbles you have to freaking uh, hook shot. First. Like a little two-step problem. So I really feel like this room, the gameplay in these little monster rooms, remind me a lot of the um, original versus Mario Brothers. But um, no, I don't think this gameplay is better than Bloom Fight right now. Like Flint Hook has some pretty swift and tight controls. Slow down if you need it, but like I feel like the enemies just do whatever. <laughs> And the shooting is just kind of whatever. The game is mostly about moving in this cool way, but it's still not that interesting. Like this, like another way with these boring enemies that are barely paying attention to me. And I just have the freedom to completely move around like a crazy man. And then another way, be like, okay. That's kind of what the whole game's like. You're like, okay. Keep it up, I guess. No, I know I'm still early. Sure, whatever. Oops, so, okay, I only can carry one of these. I'm going to toss one. And then pick up this one. Oh, it's a pirate. Oh! I feel like I go into, like, almost all these rooms without seeing what I need to do and seeing how dangerous it is. Okay, stop that. And, um... I'm always getting hit for it. It's annoying. Like, right now the background is really busy, and I didn't see those tiny little nubs at the top. And when those things are about to shoot a laser, they don't shoot a pre-laser, they just have sparks at the top. So if you're looking at the bottom of the screen, you may be probably going to get hit by those lasers. So the degree to which I have to scan everything is irritating. That's why I like Mega Man. Not only there's less um, elements, but um, the screen scrolls by slowly so that you can see the room and then you can control. This one, the screen scrolls by quickly and you can't really see the room. You're like, oh, you're already in it. And you're like, oh, I'm already moving. <laughs> it's like, it's too late. Oh, those boring flies. Here we go. I wonder if I can go down through this. There we go. He has a really quick fast fall. That's cool. I like how the blasts have a chance of hitting multiple enemies as long as it's close enough. Oh, more boring enemies. Oh, see, I totally want to hook that bubble. Probably should have picked a slightly better spot to do that. A few apples, that's fine. Uh, let's see, okay, let me think about this room. If I undo time, mm -hmm. I can kill those birds by running the missiles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, birds don't get killed by that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Just risk my life for no reason, just for a few coins. I don't know if touching that thing gets hurts me.
A lot of modern platformers look like they are um, adding slowdown to the game, so that, or slow mo, not slow down. Is it a? It's it's still choppy. Hmm. Because the stream shouldn't be taking up that much energy. I think uh, Hunter Net was choppy too last night. If I don't stream it off my um. Switch, it looks like my computer cannot handle it, or maybe I need to make sure I have enough RAM. That's okay, hopefully, it's not too bad. Maybe I'll just get two computers. I like how fast he can go down for no reason. So, I like this close range stuff though. Having to get close to the targets. Oh man, I got hit. Oh, now you get your bubble. Boring enemies. This room layout was potentially more interesting than the wave of enemies that uh, spawned up. But that's okay. Let's go to the next one. No more scouting rooms. Just go headlong. Let's go. That was close. Let's see what this guy wants. I, I, I don't know. He's in a red bubble. I've never encountered that before. What does that mean? That means I can't break it? Okay. Okay, I'll use the slow down one. Uh, uh. This room's annoying. Oh. I feel like you don't get to see very far below you when you're dropping. It actually puts more stuff on the top half of the screen than the bottom. But you know, whatever. You don't need to see. Perfectly in time to get hit by the laser. Oh, shoot. This sums up a lot of what Flint Hook is right now, just kind of like, here it is! It's a gameplay, right? So the, the size of Flint Hook on the screen is a good size. Um, because this is widescreen, I want to say he's like the size of Small Mario, but because the game's widescreen, it looks like he's even smaller. Um, you know, the, the objects on the screen, the hooks and everything, nice and large. And the, the icons on objects are nice and readable, as long as you don't get distracted by the clutter of the overall visual presentation. But... You know, you got this cool gun. It's just the level design. Not only do, do I find uh, each individual room not that interesting, but you randomly shuffle them up and give me some kind of RPG-like, long-term roguelike progression. That's really not for me. I don't think it makes the game better. It just makes it slightly different. But when you feel the sort of repetitiveness and the lack of variation so quickly, you're like, it doesn't matter how much you shuffle that up. It's, it's too little variation. So let's see what happens in this boss battle. I have 80 health. I love the uh, fiction. Space pirates and space pirate ships and hooking them and hooking things inside of them, like, that's super cool. So this made me so mad before. I beat this boss, and I have one hit left. That's how clutch it was. And I go into the final resolution room, and for some reason they let you drop through the floor, and I died, and, I'm, and they had to do all these levels over again. Makes me mad. Give me that meat. So let's see what the boss is. Let's 
So you kill a tail, and then that thing launches this weird starfish. And then the starfish likes to stop and then shoot at you, like this some Nickelodeon character. And then you pop the tail again by hookshotting it and delivering the necessary damage. You can't stop the starfish until they stop themselves. And you kind of repeat. So this is like this is actually a really cool boss fight. Oop. And then he drops bombs behind him until he drops bombs behind him until you can pop the tail, which is dangerous. Because if you don't pop it into this stage right here, you could have a lot more danger on the screen than you'd like. Ninja starfish, probably better to take care of these. And then you fly back over here. Oh, nice shot. Ooh, missed him. So this is one of the cool parts of Flint Hook where you can navigate comfortably. See, see how the like distributions of hooks are really easy to understand? Haha, <laughs> I sniped that tail. Okay, I'm dying. Just like last time, just kinda... This boss kinda has like too many hits. That's alright. You get a little relaxed and then all of a sudden he starts to kill you with whatever he's doing. Nice shooting tax. Go after you. Oh, see, you want to just kind of fly around, but there's too many things kind of raining down bullets on you, so you kind of have to play a little bit more conservatively. That's fine. I'm in trouble. Killed Patrick Star. Oh, <laughs> that bomb he laid behind him was blocking my shots. Oh, come on! See, it's cool aiming. This is exactly the example of a room with uh, scrolling. So, like, I, it's not easy to see the enemies all the time. It's kind of what I was saying before. So you can kind of take your time here while the guy shoots. Oh, I want to grab the bubble. Okay, again, barely one with one hit left. Just like last time, nothing changes. Cool boss, cool boss. And then I was like, yeah, feeling good. Feeling good, went to the next room. Right here, you can, you can hit, not yet. Apparently I'm looking for whoever that is and this person keeps stealing him. Very Meat Boy-esque. So you can drop through this platform here and die. I'm not going to do it again. And then I was like, you can drop through this platform and die. And I was like looking up and screaming like, oh look at this treasure. And I accidentally hit down and, and jump and killed myself and lost all that work. So disappointing. And I'm not going to blow myself up with this bomb either. I'm just going to pick this up. We're going to get out of here. Oh, it's a monkey dude. G gold feathers? It's a bird? <laughs> so yeah, video games are complicated. Uh, if you get the creativity part right, a unique idea, the art style right, the controls right, you know, you still gotta do level design and that's pretty make or break. So, you know, I've warmed up a little bit back up to this game after first playing it and kind of getting irritated that I died right there at the end and not wanting to do all this over. But then it has all this extra stuff that really is just like challenge mode, normal play mode, black market where I think you buy permanent upgrades to something or other. I don't even understand. 
Uh, relics, this is maybe where you buy, or this is where you collect relics from, like each level may have one, so you're like, oh, I gotta find these in the galaxy. Collectibles. Uh, black market, let's see. Unlocked, so you, can, you can't even get these things in the, um, the levels randomly unless you unlock them here or something like that. You're rewarded with gold for ending battles swiftly. That's what I want. You're rewarded with gold for flawless battles against the pirate hordes. Swiftly. How much money do I even have? I don't even know what I just bought that with. Maybe I'm just unlocking. I'm unlocking the hardcore version of... Where am I? Oh, seven bottom left is my funds. <laughs> Get some stamina. Add more HP to your max HP. Get some stamina. You're pumping some iron that gets you more XP, friend. I want more perk plus. These are four and five each. Alright. So yeah, let's see if there's any questions. Let's see if it's still smooth. Yeah, I, I'm such have such mixed feelings about the slowdown, uh, the fact that it re recharges so quickly, and technically there's like no reason not to use it um, for anything. Like, oh, are you even slightly less confident? Just slow it down, and and you, I guess it's one of those things where you use it if you want to, if not, whatever. I tend to try not to use it at all. So if you need it, certainly, you know, get yourself up to speed. <laughs> by slowing things down. Uh, do you think slowing down time? Uh, I really want to like this game. Says dyslexia. <laughs> Dark blue letters. I can hardly read. Uh, I feel like it got stuck in dev difficulty where they just kept adding unlocks to whatever playtests didn't seem super fun. It does seem to have a ton of complexity outside the main game. So yeah, I guess we'll check out challenge mode. There's a daily challenge for today, here's a weekly challenge, and here's a daily challenge, and here's a weekly challenge. <laughs> Sometimes you get confused, like, wait, it's the same thing, there's two options. Let's try daily. So you get your booster pack, increases your chances of finding relics, cool. Booster pack, get more chances of critical hits, I don't need critical hits. Booster pack, gain more firepower when your health is lower. I don't even think you need that either because this game is about hitting multiple enemies or bosses that have multiple stages. Like, get more fire. I don't need that. Um, I think I have two extra slots. This menu is kind of hard to read. So, in insufficient funds, but I can get these apples because I have two slots to deal with. So, I get a special sales every shop that you've. Let's do this one. And start. Oops. Yeah, that's the one level I can pick. So there's just one level for the daily. Visit the black market to gain extra XP or new abilities like aim lock. Oh, I guess we'll experiment with the um, controls before I end. But just showing you a little bit more of what the game has to offer. Oh, I just picked randomly. I don't think... Okay, this is dangerous. So when you, you hook onto a transition door, you can actually hook onto it and let go before you get sucked in. Or even stuff like, oh, like this? No, that just makes you go in. That's fine. Slow down, why not? Woo! Oh, that was a little insane. But I got so a lot of my health back. Do I have to go back up? Hmm. Okay, what the heck? This day was gonna kill me. Okay. This is not good. Come on, finicky controls. Oh, I guess I wall jump. I never think of wall jumping at all. Now I gotta go diagonal and not kill myself. Jeez. 
That's enough for me. Daily challenge lost. We. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Get me out of here. Weekly challenge. Yeah, I don't like it when they that menu was A to get into the menu, X to confirm your loadout, and then A again to select the level. That's confusing. I don't know why he just like flies up sometimes and doesn't others. Am I holding it just that much longer? Give me the meat and give me back up almost to full health. He does not have a slow wall slide. Oh, boring room. There down there. See, this is the kind of gameplay you get with Mega Man, like every screen where you're jumping over. Oh. Get out of here with your weird hair. I don't know what that smoke's doing. It's bothering me. Did I do it fast enough and get my bonus? Probably not. I like how the enemies don't correct their aim uh, after they put their gun out. I like that. Like, quit tracking me, jerks. Slow down, why not? Shoot, I have to kill this mage? Not sure what I was supposed to do to get across there. This guy's gonna stop rushing me. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's oh, less level design, just more just dudes in a room. Which doesn't make me too thrilled to try hard. That's all right. Oh, so let's see, any last questions about Flint Hook? We'll mess with the controls, let's see. The three element menu wrapping constantly. <laughs> Where is it? So let's take a look at what their alternate controls look like. Options. Controls, default pro, default pro. Where do they explain that? Monkey feather dude, that's fine. Ah, keeping the wrong buttons. No. And I don't even know why they let you select. Ships, I guess I don't know what the difference is. I'm just smashing until I get some gameplay and then I complain. So I think this control scheme uses the shoulder button on the top. So now, now you can aim, if you can see this, with the right analog stick. So no matter which way you're moving, it jumps on the button now so you can just pretty much keep your fingers on the right analog stick the whole time and you jump while just pointing in different directions to shoot. Oh, it's, it's a little getting used to. So they re he really does have... I guess you don't have to do that, so one button's on the slow-mo. Jump hook, jump hook. Hook is still, looks like it's... I guess he hooks where he's shooting, so you can move in one direction and... It takes priority on the direction your character's facing, so... I don't know. I don't think it's worth it to shoot in any direction that much. Oh, shoot! Let's see. 
now I can just smash attack. You know, I really like aiming in Mega Man where you line things up. We'll see how this works. I didn't see that jump pad. What's my shoot button? Oh I, oh, I didn't realize normally you have to hold the button to charge, but in this they made doing nothing charge, which is like Kid Icarus. I was like, how am I charging? This guy needs to shut up. Also a weird thing, when you think you're hitting pure sideways, depending on how they tune their um, analog stick controls, pure sideways could... Oh, I didn't even know that was a platform. I can't see in this game. <coughs> pure, pure sideways that you think could be pure sideways is actually like slightly angled. Like look, pure sideways, slightly angled. And a lot of a lot of devs when they put analog stick controls like this, they don't like to make like a bigger grace window for the cardinal directions. They just like leave it up to the raw calculation to determine your angle. I'm like, you know I'm hitting right, right? Like I didn't want slightly slightly upright. I wanted it right. I always want the cardinals when I'm going for the cardinals and everything else can be a little bit fine-tuned. But whatever. That's why I like the way uh, Sakurai does Smash Brothers and the or at least how we used to do the C stick. It's like, you know, it's just four directions in the stick, so don't get too crazy. Don't make it too complicated. <laughs> right when I jumped, huh? I like your style. I didn't want to go that door. Right when I jump, huh? <laughs> just, just kidding. Yeah, it's not like having a simple room like that is a bad thing. Obviously, you know, even Mega Man has rooms with just just a handful of elements in it. But it's all about what your game's doing overall and whether or not it needs the pacing before you just put like a blank room or a, a, a boy room inside of it. See right there, I was trying to grab his bubble, but I grabbed the hook instead. So you gotta be really freaking careful, which is kind of annoying. Just like freaking. Um, Teleporting with Zelda and Smash Brothers. Like, you could kill yourself if you're not careful. That room's annoying. Ah, uh, this is gonna kill me. Hey, Apple! All that work for 10, but 10 still worth it. I've never seen these before. Almost got hit. I was close, I hit the wrong button. Oh, I hit the wrong button again. Yeah, I don't like using the shoulder buttons for platforming, but I grew up on the NES, so it's like, I use face buttons to jump. I wish this control scheme had, even though it's pro mode and you don't need to use any of the face buttons like this, why not just have redundant controls and then let me use the face button when I accidentally break the habit and then use the other options when when I need to. Let's buy this. What are you saying? I don't have enough money? So the map says I could go left. Oh. Okay, not what I wanted. Let's see, jump is this, jump is this. 
And that's the whole room. It's kind of over too quick. But you know, some of them are like that. Some of them are like that. Alright. Yeah, and I think he... I think they always put a, um... A mini room encounter, like a monster closet right before the end um, treasure. So at least it has some kind of an arc, but overall, it just feels piecemeal, right? Like random rooms stuck together. And that's usually why roguelikes and procedurally generated level design kind of burns me out real quick. The whole thing with level design is you put pieces together to do something greater by like having the sequence of pieces be something significant then you very carefully control that in this game or any other game where you relinquish that control just doing stuff over and over isn't what I consider to be you know high level level design oh Tony how the controls confusing me I switched controls for that last uh, mission so I, I was playing on standard and I switched to pro and pro basically removes the face buttons and allows the analog stick to be used as a direct input and action uh, simultaneously. Uh, plus a difficulty type, it's all enemies dex dexterity tests. Aiming jumping is way easier with the mouse. Huh. I was just talking about this the other day when I was playing um, what is it, no Noritu Love Devolution? And there's like these weird platformers, uh, action games on PC that like to use the mouse because obviously every PC comes with a keyboard and mouse and sometimes they find these weird hybrids. I guess what you're saying, oh, let me play with the mouse. I guess what you're saying is Flint Hook is one of those games, so let me see what I can do here. I like rapidly switching between control schemes sometimes, like playing Mega Man with reverse hands, or like, you can't see it, but reverse hands and then just swip, switching it back and forth. You know, piano has taught me well. If, if you're able to have that kind of flexibility, you usually don't complain about button layouts. But let's see. So what's, what's the deal here? So the mouse moves relative to the character, and it's always in this little circle. Um, up this jump, which I, I don't like up jump, so I'm going to use space bar. Uh, maybe I'll use up. Right click looks like it's hook, and left click is probably shoot. That's, that's a pretty smooth... Um, what is this? I don't like bounce blast. Oh! Let's try this one over here. I want this. What is it? Fralandian Scepter. E. Added to my relic, so I just bought a relic. It does nothing. So, where's slow mo? Shift. Okay. <laughs> this guy's just doing nothing hanging on this zone. Oh. Controls get kind of crazy. I have to hold four buttons right there, or maybe three. Wall jump to the right, shift to slow down time, right click, and I was also holding space for no reason. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Oh, that's an awkward feeling. Let me get used to it. Nope, I said let me get used to it. Oh my gosh. Okay, could not get used to it. Mouse controls are interesting. I think all the control schemes work. I'd take the default controller control scheme most. But that's cool, that's cool. I guess I can play a little bit of Mega Man Maker next time to show you, you know, what I really love about how simple Mega Man is, but how it's pretty much the king of 2D action, running, gun, shoot 'em up man style games. Like, I like uh, Gunstar Heroes, that was cool. Mission Makers was cool. Uh, but Mega Man is still the best, Mega Man 9 and 10. Uh, so we can check out a little bit of that later. So let me just uh, 
get off the game real quick and uh, close this thing out. Again, no E2 love too. That's the name of the game. But cool, that was just a little look at Flint Hook. We'll take a look at action games later. Uh, I'm pretty much setting up the next few episodes to talk a little bit about the complexity of understanding action RPGs and what are RPG elements in the first place and what they're good for and how they mess up action games, basically. <laughs> Almost any time you add RPG elements to an action game, unless you control it very specifically and very well, they usually just mess up the sort of purity of and the simplicity of action gameplay. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, and you can send in all your questions and join us on the DO Discord if you have any questions or if you want to try to yell at me. You can always try. <laughs> but until next time, I'll see you guys later.